thank the ranking member for this hearing today. And the partisanship and the politics of this hearing is absolute and complete BS. Our country and the entire world faced a pandemic unlike anything our generation has ever faced. And some decisions were made that were good, and some were decisions were made that I'm sure we're going to look back on 20 years from now and have a great heartburn over, like all of the fraud that's been committed. Um, you know, partisanship in politics has kept us from doing our job on oversight. It keeps us from doing our job in Congress. It keeps our federal agencies from being able to be the best that they can be. Um, and any time that the federal government spends trillions of dollars, we should ensure it's safekeeping regardless of who is in power. Uh, COVID-19 is not the fault of this administration or the past administration uh, at all, um, but it's up to us. I mean, the spending and the fraud has been a product of Republicans and Democrats for generations and for decades. Um, we've got to ensure that uh, the safekeeping of this money is, is done better now than ever before. Um, there was guidance from federal agencies on how to allocate these funds. The guidance was vague. Uh, it led to potential integrity concerns and opportunities for bad actors seeking to take advantage. And I know that at the time this was rushed and there was uh, an urgency because of the worldwide emergency. But even with these concerns, the money kept flowing. As the last two COVID relief spending bills added to the sum total of 1.15 trillion payments to individuals, just over 1 trillion to unemployment when we literally paid people to stay home. No wonder, none of us should be surprised, it was hard to get people out of their homes and back to work. And we had uh, you know, $779 billion for PPP loans, a total of about $5 trillion was spent roughly on COVID relief. As of today, there have been over 1,000 people convicted of fraud relating to COVID-19 problems, while over 600 are currently facing similar, similar federal charges. And it sounds like by the testimony today, there might be thousands of more charged in the years ahead. And I appreciate everyone's testimony today coming here and being forthright with our committee. Um, today, I'm encouraged by our leadership on oversight that we will leave no stone unturned to uncover waste, fraud, and abuse plaguing these programs. And the thing that I found, I think, most interesting to me in the testimony today is the data issues that we as a federal government have. You mentioned, Mr. Horowitz, about having to subpoena 50 states for data. And it doesn't matter if we're dealing with immigration or we're dealing with COVID relief fraud or we're dealing with background checks on, on bad guys trying to buy guns. We have a real problem with data, data integrations, our systems talking to one another, our legacy technology that's being utilized. And if we don't fix it soon, uh, we're just going to be overrun with it. So I appreciate some of the ideas that have been put forth. But one of the things that does intrigue me, and I think it probably intrigues a lot of people, and this is in the few uh, moments that I have left in the committee today, is the use of artificial intelligence in some of this and, and trying to find the fraud. And of course, now we all know about it since ChatGPT, five million users, I mean, one million users in the first five days. Um, and only growing exponentially, and they're not the only ones. I mean, there's GitHub and Copilot and a bunch of others. But I would just, my, my questions today, and I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Horowitz. Can you explain the type of work, you know, what, how is AI being used? Is it advantageous? Is it speeding up the process? How useful is it? Just some of your feedback with the use of AI in, in detecting fraud. Uh, yeah, and, and thank you, Congressman. It's a very important question you raise. And, and I think at the outset, people need to be cautious about it. We've, already, we've also read about some of the cautions in using AI. I know IGs are doing oversight work in that space. GAO is as well. Um, but it, it, it can be very helpful. And in fact, it, it's just an advance, a further advancement at some level of the analytics that we're using to try and find uh, issues and anomalies and problems and, and things we should be following up on. So for example, we used a more primitive form of AI um, at the outset to try and help the, lab the SBA Inspector General because they were getting in one day a thousand or more complaints, which was more than they w had gotten in the prior year in total. They needed to try and figure out and triage those. What were the highest level, most important ones? They came to the PRAC, we helped them triage that by using a form of, if you will, AI, far more primitive than what you mentioned. Uh, but those are the kinds of things we can do. It's something that we have to do. 
um, as a government-wide, agencies need to use it, inspectors general need to use it, I know GAO uses it. it. It's the future of oversight. Thank you. And I've run out of time, but I look forward, I look forward to working with you all as the new subcommittee chairman on tech, uh, cyber, and government innovation. It's, it's going to be a huge marker for us to determine waste, fraud, and abuse in the future, and I agree. Thank you for your time.